Well, I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, this is uh, the topic we're going to go over today is one of my favorite things with salt um, because it's, uh, in my opinion, it can make your life a lot easier. Um, it can make your infrastructure smarter. And before salt existed, some of this stuff is things that I uh, really wish we would have had available. So um, to introduce myself, uh, my name is Dave Boucher. I'm, I'm an employee at SaltStack. I've uh, worked in a lot of different areas with SaltStack, core engineer, worked in professional services, um, a whole variety of things. And um, like I said, I'm excited to be here. So today we're going to talk about event-driven automation. Uh, so I think a lot of people have different ideas of what event-driven automation is. So I want to talk a little bit about the theory, and then I want to talk a little bit about what you can do uh, within SALT for event-driven automation, and then I have a bunch of um, uh, live demos. So I like living on the edge, and uh, we're going to have some lights here um, going on and off. We're going to have um, a bunch of things uh, that we'll, t we'll test. So um, anyway, it should be fun. So first of all, what is event-driven architecture? Uh, Martin Fowler has several good blog posts talking about <coughs> what event-driven architecture is and what it can be, the different types of architecture. So there's uh, four that he talks about at the URL. Um, you can see here, the slides will be available after um, if you want to get that URL. You can just Google it as well if you want. Uh, but these four things he talks about are um, event notification, event-carried state transfer, event sourcing, and CQRS, which is command query responsibility segregation. Um, <laughs> So what we're going to kind of talk about today are the first two. Um, event sourcing, the third one is kind of interesting. Uh, essentially, it's talking about using events and keeping track of those events. And, you, and the benefit of doing that is you can keep like an audit. And you can build the proper state of your infrastructure from those events. Um, I think you could build that out with SALT, um, but that's kind of much more complicated. So uh, we're going to talk mostly about the first two here. So event notification, uh, essentially it's a very simple, very loosely coupled infrastructure where the source of your event doesn't really care what happens uh, once that event is sent. So um, it sends an event and then it washes its hands and it's done and then something else does something. Um, event carried state transfer uh, is where information about the event, it comes along with the event and uh, again, the source doesn't really care much, but the, the recipient of that event then uses that data, sticks into a database, uh, changes configs, whatever, based off the, the data in that event. Um, so those first two um, work very well within um, how SALT works. Uh, I'm gonna assume that you have at least a beginner to intermediate, intermediate level of understanding of how SALT works. Uh, I found this slide somewhere else. So, kind of shows you a little bit on the left-hand side. We have all of your nodes, right? And those can be a whole variety of things. Windows servers, Linux servers, FreeBSD servers, containers, um, Internet of Things, devices, a whole variety of things. And all of those things um, can send events. Salt has this event bus. You can see here it's kind of like this orbital loop. You know, they go up to the master and come back down. Um, and uh, so, you have a source of the events, and then typically with SALT, you'll use what we call the reactor to do things uh, based on uh, those events. Um, so let's talk about those event sources. Uh, when you're running SALT, um, lots of events are already running through the event bus right now. You may not know it, but every time a minion tries to authenticate with a master, it has, um, it sends an event, there's events that, are, are, that correspond to that. When a minion starts up, the master, you get a start event. Uh, every time you spin up a cloud uh, a VM or tear one down, you get events. When you accept and reject and delete keys, you get events. Every job you run, um, there's events that, that are, are there sent. Um, and these are all happening under the covers right now in your SALT infrastructure. Um, other things you can do for the sources of events are beacons. We have a whole series of beacons um, that you can use to generate events that you get to define. So, for example, here you can uh, watch for system load. So if it gets above you know, a certain threshold, you can send an event. Uh, you know, so maybe you need to spin up more VMs because your 
the, your web servers are being overloaded or whatever you might want to do. Uh, file system changes, we have an iNotify beacon. Um, uh, disk usage, get notified if there's, you know, uh, your disks are getting full, shell activity, um, status of services. You know, if a, if a service has gone down or if it's dead for some reason, you can, this beacon will check and tell you, hey, you know, Apache's down and send an event and, and then you could do something like that. Um, that's one I wish I had years ago. There was an application that had support um, on some Windows servers and this application just, it would, over the course of about a week, it would just chew up memory, chew up memory, chew up memory, and then about once a week we had to restart uh, this, that service. Um, and it was a known bug, it was a proprietary piece of software, and then you just like deal with it. And so we had to like, you know, we had cron jobs, we had people, you know, it was just a real pain. It would have been really nice to be able to have a beacon say, hey, we've reached a, reached a certain threshold of, of usage, of, you know, memory usage, and then have the reactor say, okay, restart this service, and then report that it did that. Um, there's a lot of things like that you can do. Um, you can also re uh, have sources of your events come from Salt API and also your own custom one. So uh, Salt API, if you're not familiar, is um, a REST interface that you can um, start up on your Salt Master if you want. It's, it's disabled by default. Um, it's a really powerful tool to allow other applications or other infrastructure interfa interact with your Salt Master. Um, as part of the API, there's a webhook so you can send information in to, through the Salt API onto your Salt event bus. So an example of that is um, we have, a, you can set it up so that on AWS, for example, if you have a new server come up in, a, in a, um, uh, an auto-scaling group, you can have AWS send an event to your event bus, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, to your webhook on your Salt Master, and then that would come through to your, um, uh, your event bus, and then you could like accept the key automatically. You could um, then run salt states, configure that new server, add it behind a load balancer, or whatever uh, you would want to do. So you can get events um, from that event hook, that web hook. Um, your own salt modules and your own salt states can send events. So uh, there's a feature that I added a few years ago where if you just add, um, oh, I think it's fire event or fire, yeah, I think it's fire underscore event, true. Any little segment of your, of your salt states, you can have it send an event saying, hey, this event, or this state um, uh, was successful or failed, or whatever the output of that is. Um, you can also, there's a, a, a Python, or a salt module um, where you can send events as well. So if you want to send an event as the very last item um, in your high state or your, your uh, SLS file, you can send an event and, uh, um, you know, do whatever you want with that. Um, your Python API, if you, you know, you import salt, you can send events to that. So if you have your own Python application, um, you can import salt and send events um, on that event bus. Um, and also there's uh, CLI commands you can run uh, to send events. So other tools like Jenkins could send an event on the event bus. Maybe, you know, this SHA hash or your, this tag from your Git repo suddenly so is passed all the tests. It could send an event to your salt master and then maybe that gets deployed or goes through some approval process um, as part of that. So there's a lot of ways you can, you know, get in, ingest events, create your own events, and uh, it's, uh, it's a really powerful set of tools. I worked with uh, several big customer, several of our customers to uh, build out really custom behaviors um, through all these systems. Okay, so we have, almost an overwhelming uh, amount of ways we can get these events. Now, what do we do with those? That's where reactors come in. So a reactor typically is, it's a process that runs on your master. Um, uh, somewhat, sometime in the last year, we actually added the ability to do this locally on the minion as well. Um, but the reactor allows you to do things based on these events that come through. So there's four different kind of classes of things you can do. Um, first, and there are here we're kind of reviewing some of the, some of the internals of Salt. There are different, there's four different kind of clients, they're called clients. So you have, first you have the local client, uh, which is kind of a, a misnomer because you're running this on the master and you run the local client, but it actually means you're running a command remotely on your minion. So really it means like the minion's running it locally, but you're telling the, the minion, so you can run that local client. You can also execute runners on your master. So if you wanted to, um, 
user runner like to accept a, a, a minion's key or, or reject a minion's key, you can do that. Any, any built-in salt runner, um, you can execute. You can run your own custom runners. You can execute those. Um, pardon me. The wheel uh, module, um, that's actually the better way to accept minion keys and reject keys. It's all, it's all the authentication um, and kind of uh, rejection of keys and things like that. So you could use the runner or you could call the, those wheel modules directly. And then the caller is for if you're running the, the, uh, the reactors locally on a minion. So you might have a minion that doesn't have a master and running in masterless mode. You could have it, um, so you could set up reactors just like you do on your master and do things based off events that are running around on your local minion. So these are the four things um, you can essentially do, which is basically anything Salt can do, which is basically anything you can do on your server or that Python allows you to do, or all the modules that Salt, Salt execution modules and states. So that's um, kind of a high level view. Um, I'm going to show a couple examples here. So here's an example of uh, the config for setting up the WTMP and the iNotify beacon. So WTMP has to do with uh, your shell logins. Um, so it'll tell you if someone's logged in or not. I notify here in this example, we're looking at this uh, file in Etsy, saltconf, my.conf, and we want to see close writes. And um, this option here, disable during state run, true, will make it so you don't send an event. If you're like, if you run a high state or you run a state and you're gonna modify that config file, we don't necessarily wanna kick off any events that will have other reactions during that event, because we're intending to modify that file. Um, we'll have an example here in a minute where you can kind of watch these config files and uh, make sure they don't change um, uh, if you don't want them to. Now for your, the reactor, um, this is a config file on your master. And here, uh, you have your reactor, and this is YAML. You have your reactor um, uh, heading, I guess we call it. And then you have a list of um, event tags. So when you have an event, uh, the tag, there's two pieces. There's a tag and then there's data. The tag is used by the reactor to really quickly uh, check and, and see um, into filter, essentially. And then the data gets sent out to another process and, and does something. So in this example here, we're looking for um, a, an event that uh, has salt, beacon, star, I notify, and we'll, and we'll show you what this looks like actually on the master. Um, but we're like, basically, essentially, we're looking for anything that changes this test.conf file. And if it does, we're going to execute this list of reactor SLS files. So in this example, we would run this red color SLS and then um, this reset configs SLS. Um, this asterisk here is a, is a wild card because in this instance, um, the minion ID would be there where this asterisk is. So you can do any kind of globbing you want. So I'm saying any minion where this test.conf file is modified, we're gonna run these two commands. You could also you know, have like a partial name, say you have like web star for just web servers or something like that. Um, you can put that there. Um, yeah. All right, so now we're gonna get into some live uh, examples here. Ah, if I could type in my password, all right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Yes, thank you, appreciate that. Is that good? All right, so in this master config item here, um, we're going to set up the, uh, the, the REST API, and we're going to set up a user, this demo user, that can authenticate to the API. Uh, one thing that's interesting, uh, Seth House, who wrote um, the uh, Salt API, he made an, an easy, this is an easy way to actually um, run a, or expose like a single page application. 
So we're gonna have a little uh, HTML page, we're running some JavaScript, and we're gonna do some things on this web page here. Um, okay, here's my reactor config here. As you can see, we're gonna run these uh, commands. And I'm going to comment that out for the moment. Okay. Um, this is a convenience function, so we can view what's happening on our event bus. So we have, right now we have two minions running. And uh, as you can see here, on the left-hand side, we had several um, events come through already. Um, there's a job to run our test out version that I just ran. Um, the the Celcon 17 minion um, authenticated. You had a little, uh, uh, you know, passed in its public key. Um, it ran a job, um, and then we also got the return. Um, so, let me check our beacons. Okay, so we have the iNotify beacon running already. So you can see here we have two files that we're uh, checking here. Um, sorry, let me. So on the left hand side, We have this config file, and its contents is this is a test config file. Now I have a salt state that will uh, put that file into that status, right? So if I come into um, So you can see here, um, we uh, are going to do a file.recurse. We're going to make sure the directories are there, we're setting the user and group. We're going to make sure there's no other files in that directory. And the source of these files is in saltconf configs. And then we're also going to um, send an event here. So inside of configs, Inside test.conf, you can see it's just, this is a config file. Now, when I modify, test.conf, we'll see here on the left-hand side, the beacon sent an event um, to uh, the event bus. We had some information in it. So this is the tag that I've highlighted. Can you see the highlight there? And then we have the, the contents of the data field um, is down here. So we have you know, a timestamp, the, the uh, change that the event beacon sends, the ID of the minion, and then the path of the file that was modified. All right, let me check something here. Turn these on. Okay, so these are two hue lamps. Um, and this is the, uh, the bridge for it. Now we have a... Um, a salt proxy um, for the hue. Actually, this was written by our friends over at SUSE and Linux. And that allows us to start up a minion that, um, a minion process that'll communicate with my hue base and allow me to control these lamps. So you can see here, if I do a salt star test.ping, 
I have three minions. I have a minion running on my laptop. I have a minion running on another server called Salt 17 Minion, and Huey is my Hue base here. So I'm going to turn off. Here that switch. We'll turn off lamps. We're going to set on to equal to off. So I'll turn all the way off here. Okay. Now I'm going to restart the reactor. So we had turned that off. Remember I commented out. Let's just look at that file again. So you can see here we have a we're looking for that event. And if we look over at um, that uh, event we had a minute ago, for our beacon, you can see it will match. Um, here. So here's the, the tag. And you can see here there's not an asterisk. There's the name of the, the minion, the idea of the minion that uh, notified us with that. So. Uh, let's restart our salt master now that we have our beacon. All right, and let's again, let's edit this file. Now what's going to happen is we have an, an event that turns the light red because it got the event saying that this file is modified, and then it ran a high state, um, actually not a high state, it ran a state to uh, push down the correct config, and uh, and then the, the final out, the final step of that state was to turn the lamp green. So we can see that, um, and if we come back here and cat this file, you can see it's back to just, this is a test config. <laughs> you can do this all day. So I'll turn around. I should have put in a little bit of delay so it stayed red for a little while, but something was wrong, and then now it's, it's right. Um, sometimes it kind of blows me away. People are like, well, we got to watch out for a configuration drift, and it's not like, what do you mean configuration drift? Who the heck is, you know, either you're, you've been compromised or you've got bad processes in your, in, in your environment. Like, why is anything changing that shouldn't be there? And a lot of times it's political, right? There's always, like, some developer who's so important that he has to be able to log in to the production servers anytime and fill around with stuff, um, and, and that bothers me. So there's another one that I wrote where uh, we can check for uh, events coming in um, for people logging in. So, for example, let me log into my other server here. I have it set up so that the WTMP module will um, send an event when someone logs into a server or logs out. So, I have it set up so that when someone logs into this production server, one of these lamps is going to turn red, and then when they log out, it'll turn back to actually to blue. Um, so, I logged in. You can see the events coming through here. Lamps red, so this must be an emergency. Because otherwise, why would someone be logging into your production environment? Don't be touching it, right? So we know someone's there. Okay, maybe there's some situation. Maybe you need to get some logs. Sometimes there's a there's a reason to log in to kind of see what's going on. But in my opinion, you should not have configuration drift. You get a problem. It might be a political problem, technical, you know, or you're compromised. But that's bad. Um, so then. Now we log out, and it turns blue. So if you were like Jenkins, you know, all blue's happy. So now we're back out. So um, again, you may, maybe you wouldn't do this in, for, for real life, but maybe you do want to keep track of those logins, right? This could be a way to keep um, a log of, you know, people that have logged in um, to a server and, and stick that in a database somewhere or some other logging system. Um, so you know who's been into your systems. Gonna log out, it'll turn back to blue. OK, 
Okay, so I mentioned we, I started up Salt API and have a, have a, little, a single page app, a JavaScript app running. Um, and on this machine, it's just running on my local host here. Oh wait, I didn't, did I start it up? I didn't start up. All right, so I need to log in so I can view this. Okay. All right, so let's. Uh, so I have this set up. Um, there's an endpoint on the Salt API where you can, if you're, if you're logged in with your credentials, you can actually watch the stream of events coming through uh, through this API, right? So um, this JavaScript app is set up to listen on that event, uh, event bus, and do certain things. So there's three different classes of events that I've set up to output data here. Um, so you can see here, I've logged in to, my username is Boucher, Logged into the server named Desalt. Um, if I log into that Salt Comp server, you can see root logged into Salt Comp 17. Uh, turned red because someone's logged into production. Log out again. For some reason, the, the, when, when, I, when I log into these LXC containers, uh, when I log out, um, the user ID field is empty. So it doesn't do that on, 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 on uh, my regular box here. If I log out, you can see here Boucher logged out. The salt. Okay, someone figured this out. Okay, so um, there's another type of event. So there's another beacon called um, the, the Twilio beacon, or specifically Twilio text messaging. And uh, so this beacon's running and it's checking a Twilio uh, phone number, which is this number right here. If you text something to it, it will uh, output it right there. So please keep it G rated, please. This has been recorded. So. Um, you know, feel free to send something there. Yes, I love salt. Um, another fun thing is it's uh, you can also send. Actually, it's probably gonna it'll, it'll do MMS messages as well. So again, what's happening is on our minion. We have a beacon that's checking this SMS queue on Twilio, and uh, when it gets some data uh, or, or a text message, it downloads the data um, and then sends it on the event bus. Uh, then this web page is listening to that event bus, and when it sees a Twilio text message event, then it is then it outputs the information here. Uh, another thing. You can do, I also set this up uh, today, is in addition to sending this out, we can also send a, uh, a color. So if you, uh, send it a, uh, a white list of colors, and don't worry, some people have sent in, you know, like rm-fr slash, we don't evaluate anything here, so it's not gonna <laughs> do anything. Um, so, if you, but if you, if you text a color, um, there's like eight or nine colors we've set, like uh, blue, purple, pink, yellow, white, uh, orange, and it'll change the colors here. Um, and I think with the Wi-Fi, it's kind of running a little slow. Um, I just texted it pink, I wonder. All right, well, apparently we're struggling to, uh, let, me, let me restart the, the minion here, I think we, API. Mm -hmm. 
So here's our Twilio um, configuration. Uh, Twilio text message is the uh, config option. Then you need your account SID, your auth token, and then your Twilio number, and then the interval you want to check. <coughs> um, so you, you would get these in your account um, when you log into Twilio. Okay. All right, let me try this again here. There's a bug right now where um, the, uh, the beacon tries to delete the text message after it gets the data, um, but it hasn't been marked as uh, delivered yet, and so it can't delete it, so we're getting this stack trace here. But. You know, I think, um, I think someone sent an emoji, and I think uh, that blew it up. <laughs> so I apologize, whoever sent an emoji uh, or a Unicode thing, I think we, is that you? Dang it, okay. Well, um, I'd have to go clear out the Twilio um, queue. No, that's all right, I should have said that beforehand. That's also uh, a bug that I haven't cleared out. Um, that would change the color to whatever you want there. Um, Yeah. Let me. Um, <coughs> photos work. Um, what's that? Yeah, no, photos do work. Um, it was emojis get um, to come through as um, part of the text field. And uh, it. I, I can actually probably fix it right now, actually. Anyway, let's, let's, let's skip that for now. Um, yeah, question? How uh, do reactors work with multiple masters? So the question is, how do you, if you have multiple masters, how do you get the same the masters not to all react to the same event? Very carefully. So in multi-master mode, each master is independent. So in that instance, um, you either have to um, have actions that are item potent, and it doesn't matter how many times it gets run, or you um, have to have some kind of a, a way for them to communicate. So maybe check in a database, see if this thing has been run yet. Um, but there's no, you know, in multi-master mode, the masters are completely independent, um, and there's no uh, correlation there. So. So the question is if an engine would solve that problem. Um, still, uh, an engine runs on the master individually as well. So that might make it easy to you know, communicate. Um, but you still have to have some way of setting a flag, you know, whether you're setting a flag in a database, on a file system somewhere, you know, maybe stick it in Redis or something like that. Um, but whatever would work in your infrastructure to, to coordinate. But you'd have to handle that coordination. Yeah. Great question, though. Thank you. Yeah. Simplest way uh, is a pillar. Yeah, so if, that's actually a very common thing. So uh, when I'm setting up actual infrastructure changes using reactors, um, I tr unless it's something very ephemeral, um, so the, the event bus is very ephemeral by default. It doesn't you know, log or cache any of these things. So if it's something that's ephemeral, like maybe changing the color of a light or 
just some notification you don't really care about historically, um, then you can just act upon that event. But if you were going to um, spin up a new VM or, for example, say you have web servers behind a load balancer, I like the load balancer to have a source of truth so that no matter at any point, um, that load balancer can be replaced. It can be, you know, it can, you, can update, you can run a high state and update its um, information. So, you know, that can come from pillar or a database or, um, you know, your, whatever central source of, of uh, information. And so with the reactor, I wouldn't just automatically have the reactor go spin up a new VM and set up behind the load balancer. I would um, spin up a new VM, uh, do all this configuration, and then go to that single source of truth, whether that's in a pillar, data, pillar location, um, in a database, and say, okay, we have web server 35, now um, it belongs behind this load balancer. And then I'd say, okay, now load balancer, update your config. And it wouldn't update from the, the event that we sent. It would update from its source of truth. That way, regardless of um, the events that come through, um, your um, proxy server knows you know, where it should, you know, it can always be recreated because your, your events um, that come through are ephemeral and won't be around. So um, definitely would, uh, I always work that way where possible. Any other questions? Yeah. So you had two experiments here, one where you changed the file and one where you logged in. I noticed that when you changed the file, it flashed red twice. Yeah, so what have, um, if the lamp is off, um, I have it set to turn on. And then, but the problem is you can't change the color before you turn the lamp on. And so, right, so what's happening is um, it's off, it, it, it essentially turns on. If it already was a color, it'll be red. And then, it's, then it kind of blinks to go red and then it'll change to, to the green, essentially. Um, I don't know, I'd have to. Um, sure. Go through. Oh, I th um, I'm using some of the same functions for that. Um, it, it's possible that I have an extra thing in there. Some of this was uh, kind of last minute yeah. when it was changing. So um, I'll, I'm going to have a, 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 a GitHub repo with all of these as well. The link will be in the um, in the app, so you can go to it and and uh, view these configs. Um, so this, this is kind of an example of something you could do. All right, we still have about five minutes left. Um, let me make sure I got through everything I'd wanted to. Um, that's pretty much it. Are there any other questions before, uh, before we end? Okay, all right, thanks for your time, really appreciate it. And, uh, uh, please come tonight. They're giving away these new T-shirts at the Salt booth. So if you want to be cool like us, you can get these. So thanks.